Good evening and welcome to a series of critical conversations that we are having on Scroll in partnership with Pi Consulting and Survivors Against TB. My name is Chapal Mehra. I'm a writer and a public health specialist. And today we are going to be talking about art in this pandemic. Uh, our experience of this pandemic is filled with stories, stories of resilience, stories of hope and stories of courage. But some of the stories that have kept us glued and intertwined into our lives are the stories that stream into our homes, stories that reach us through the internet and the OTT platforms that have reached our homes today from Netflix to Prime Video and so many others have become some of the main conduits of these stories to us. This is unusual in India because usually uh, we are used to big screen movies and television of a certain kind but these platforms have sort of reinvented and reorganized, in a sense, rejigged the whole puzzle around storytelling. Um, these are stories from series like Made in Heaven, Mirzapur, and so many others that India is uh, completely sort of entrenched with and enjoying fully during this pandemic. The importance of these stories cannot be underestimated because we are learning from these stories. These stories are keeping us entertained. And in times that we are forced to be in our homes, turning inwards, these stories have also become mirror to society, the society around us, which is not sugar-coated, which is not uh, heavily dosed with happy endings. It's something that is making us look inwards, but also reflect on our own lives and, in, and on our society. So today our guest, is one of the characters and one of the protagonists of many of these series. But before I introduce him, uh, let me give you the format of the show. As always, we will be in conversation for about 45 to 50 minutes. We look forward to live questions from you. You can reach us on any of our social media platforms, from Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere for Scroll, Pi, or for SATB. We look forward to the questions and we will also try to make this conversation as bilingual as possible. We will try to make English Hindi so that if there is a question in Hindi, then there is no problem in this. Our guests will talk to you in Hindi with the language of Hindi. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce my guest for today, Arjun Mathur, who is uh, now recently an Emmy uh, nominee. Congratulations, Arjun. Thank you. Thanks so much, Apal. Thank you for having me. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I just went into a long introduction because I thought the OTT platforms and the stories that we get from the OTT platforms um, are so important and some of the stories you have been heavily involved in. But first, let me start with the big news. You've just been nominated for an Emmy for Made in Heaven. Um, and it's a pretty interesting role, right? Because it most is. people wouldn't, in mainstream, what we call Hindi cinema and Hindi TV, wouldn't dream of taking this kind of a role. They wouldn't, they wouldn't choose mm. it. And I, I want to ask you, why did you? Well, uh, you're, you're right there, honestly. And, and, but let me tell you that this is not actually the first time that I did so. The very first time that I faced a camera professionally uh, was for a short film by Meera Nair called Migration, mm -hmm. which in which I happened to play Irfan Khan's young homosexual lover. So that was the first time that I ever faced, uh, faced a camera. At the time, it was just, uh, it was nothing. It was like, it wasn't even a thought. As an aspiring actor, I was getting the opportunity to be directed by Meera Nair, share screen space with Irfan Khan. And there was, it was a no brainer. The second time um, that I did it was for a film called I Am um, by Onir. Uh, the film did go on to win the national award as best Hindi film. But when it came to me, honestly, um, I had a thought by that time, at, at that point in time, I was kind of going through a personal journey which, in which I was starting to learn and realize uh, that, you know, that talent is not all that uh determines your success here so and i was coming to terms with that and i was thinking that you know what if i'm not getting a chance to do what everyone else is doing 
then I have to find another way and let me try and do what nobody else is doing. And that film in particular, it had this intimate scene with a man, which at the time did scare the, scare the hell out of me. Uh, but as an actor, I certainly wanted to break that barrier in myself and I wanted to challenge myself with it. So therefore, I went ahead with that. So coming back to Made in Heaven, by the time Made in Heaven actually came to me, I was a little bit apprehensive. Just in the in my first instinct was a little, just a bit of apprehension, only because I had done it twice before. And I sincerely felt that there are other actors that should be challenged with this kind of uh, role. So I shared that. I shared that with uh, Zoya. And all she said to me was that, uh, you know what, fair enough, take it home and read it. And it took me one night of reading to realize what that show was and what it was trying to do, what it was trying to say. And I just had to be a part of it. I knew that. And I was so thankful and grateful that it had come to me. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to follow up. You, you've said a lot of uh, very interesting things about, uh, you know, how talent doesn't determine uh, success very often, but there's always the desire to do something meaningful, something impactful. And in a way, this show has done that. But uh, for all these roles that you've done, whether it was with Mira, whose uh, short film was really quite remarkable uh, at the height of the HIV crisis, in a sense, and you know, uh, sort of looking at those stories, how does one yeah. prepare for this role? Because you know, most people don't know where to start, and there is also the fear of being typecast. You know, being given one role or one kind of role all the time, which is uh, which is difficult for a young, talented actor. Um, in terms of preparation, I can't say for sure because, look, the filmmakers, I, I, I understand that in in the previous decades in Bollywood, there has been there has been misrepresentation of of the community, you know, and often a time they've been ridiculed almost, you know, uh, for a long time, it was almost like the comic relief in a Bollywood film to have a queer character, you know, and um, that's all really bizarre. So for this, obviously, I mean, for these, I mean, I've only done it firstly with filmmakers that are or are, that are of a different mind and that are of a certain level of sensitivity and maturity and are not interested in misrepresenting the community. So coming from that, they were also very clear that, look, his mannerisms or behavior are not supposed to give away his sexual identity, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, because that because because that's not how life is, you know. But uh, so, yeah, so so in coming. So in terms of preparation, it didn't require anything special from me or anything that I wouldn't have put into a part if I was playing a straight heterosexual man. You know, I've done so many more of those. So. Yeah, actually, it wasn't. It was a breeze for me. And, and, and in Made in Heaven in particular, Zoya, the makers were very clear that this character is an alpha male. He's masculine. Uh, he just likes sleeping with men. In fact, when you see him on screen, even women should de desire him. But, oh, too bad he likes boys, you know. That was the approach that we were going with. And um, so, yeah, in terms of preparation, there was really nothing special that it took from me. Except each time that I had to get intimate with a man on screen, of course, for 10 minutes uh, before giving the shot, there was a little bit of edginess. But, you know, you just jump in and do that. It's work. Yeah, that that's one of the actually the main questions a lot of people were asking me when I said put right. out a, a social media creative, you know, and they were like, you have to ask him. Uh, yeah. How does one prepare for those? Because what I loved about uh, the series also was not just that it showed queer characters in a certain way, but it was a deeper comment on all our sexual lives, right? The underbelly yeah, was coming. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and people were like, no, actually this doesn't happen in a marriage, but it does. And, mm. um, you know, the intersection of the queer and the straight world, which we think is so finely drawn is actually not, because these yeah. characters are jumping between friendships and affections. So when yeah. you look at the character and the sex in this, I don't think this has ever been done in such a tactful way on yeah. uh, on an Indian screen. How did yeah. you and the director, I want to say, because the director has a role to play here, yeah. prepare yeah. for it? 
Oh, you don't prepare for this. You don't prepare for it. To be very honest, I'll be. And again, I I just want to reiterate again that honestly, the preparation for a part is, and you know, unless it really requires you to be physically different from what you are, or you know, put on a voice or something like that, unless you really need to change something about yourself for the character, then. there's really it's the preparation is no different from preparing for any other character because what you're actually preparing for is an emotional journey of a character you know mm-hmm. so that has nothing to do with physicality to be honest you know so yeah the preparation is always uh coming more mentally and emotionally coming to a place where you need to be however you do that you know where different actors have different ways of getting there of getting where they need to be to be able to truthfully portray uh the emotions authentically you know um yeah so that preparation is an emotional one it's it's uh, and and it exists for every part whatever it is i play you know um but sorry what was the other part of your question no i mean i was just like how involved was the director in this preparation yes. not it a- yeah no um in a in, in the day to day preparation of playing this part you mean yeah yeah well uh, not too much you know after we did our initial uh, readings and after we had all our conversations before we started shooting and did all the readings and once we had our understanding of the characters the directors very much left us in complete control of our devices you know also because there were uh, directors were changing the actors were constant and the directors were changing so often what happens in this format is sometimes a new director comes in who is not yet familiar with the world that while filming has been created and they need the actors to kind of walk them through it a little bit you know it happened with me on another uh, british tv series i did called indian summers that was the first time that i experienced it a 10 episode format wherein uh, you know there were three directors that were directing through those 10 episodes and uh, yeah and often they would just come in and be like okay you guys know you were playing these characters so how do you want to do this you know so uh, yeah it's 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 interesting but yeah i mean i will say that of course on a technical level day to day every day uh, the fact that uh, the the way it's been portrayed is so aesthetically pleasing and uh, emotionally resonating that is all the director that's completely the director and the dop and you know the the crew that's putting that together um yeah like 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 the intimacy the scenes where we had to get extremely intimate the scene you spoke of which has never you know something like that has not been shown between two men before in india and uh, uh yeah those were just crafted by our technical team you know it was very very much decided how best to uh keep this in a beautiful zone rather than a uh, anything that crosses the line you know uh so i'm we're at our uh quarter mark so i'm going to remind our audiences if you have any questions for arjun please go ahead and ask them i know one of the questions is going to be around the maid in heaven season 2 so i'm not even going to ask that okay. i'm just going to leave it to people to ask yeah, that of you sure, but sure. you you mentioned something very interesting uh, around uh, talent which i thought was really uh, uh a segue into our next question which is the ott platforms right suddenly uh, we are seeing with the rise of these platforms almost like a burst of creativity we're seeing stories we have never seen before we are seeing narratives we are seeing actors we have never seen before right yeah. all these actors really talented were small small characters in some big film where there's always a big star and there's song and dance but suddenly these guys are cross the board getting such versatile roles and we are seeing such a such a fresh breath of stories and talent you know which is a break from the i don't want to say this but sas bahu serials that you know had driven yeah, us crazy sure uh, absolutely uh, indian audiences um do you think uh, 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 these these shows are more real because they are showing us the anger the violence the inequality in society the real emotions of real people because there are no sugary endings to a lot of them what, what how do you react to it as an actor as an artist i mean i personally i love where we are i love where we are because like uh, 
listen i've had a long journey you know it's been 13 years that i've been acting and i've been completely in that situation that you speak of i think i've been uh, there's so much talent in this city that's been just waiting in the wings you know for their moment to shine and and you're right like uh, many many actors uh, myself included definitely have been uh, have been used as embellishments in star vehicles um but i like where we are now you know the thing is that what ott has done essentially m- more than even more for creators and uh, you know filmmakers than and writers you know than actors it's um, they've freed them of the shackles of this box office pressure you know and that essentially has given everybody the freedom to make braver choices you know write better content make casting choices that they weren't able to before and um, yeah it's like a total renaissance i think and you know for the last few years i know there's been this uh, unending debate of theater versus ott i don't i can't pick a side there i love it all you know but here we are a situation we've been pushed into where theaters are shut uh, all the most of the all the content has been coming on streaming platforms often we've had a really big film that's come with a small show and the show has overshadowed the film completely so i think it's amazing that this is happening you know i mean um it's it just kind of levels the playing field a lot and all that can come out of this at the end is just uh, you know i think everyone will together pull up their socks we're no more catering to just uh, a niche audience in india or uh, just the masses in the b centers or anything we are uh, speaking to a global audience is going to push everyone to pull up their socks and just create better and better content you know and i think like the audience is in a win win hmm. no and and i think the artists are also in a win win because i was uh, recently talking to a group of people who are from what we term b crowd or b b sure. towns and uh, the amount of resonance that shows like mih yeah. or uh, mirzapur wow. or patal sure, sure. have with them yeah. because uh, they feel like it's finally showing their correct the the world that they live in Correct. and uh, not some you know glossed over Absolutely. version of a university Absolutely. or classroom or of life where everybody has yeah. a has a big fat indian wedding because most indian weddings are not like that as you know uh, the other question that has come up uh, actually we've already got two people asking me about mih second season so i'm just going to bring it yeah. up yeah okay because, sure <laughs> well um on, honestly we were uh honestly i'll i'll tell you i was we were almost going on the floors in in the month of may so but then we got struck by this and this is where we are but um, i don't know you know honestly i am as in the dark as you i am hearing some murmurs of things starting up again but i don't have a i don't have a date or anything solid to present you know unfortunately amazon or tiger baby will be much better equipped to answer this i'm just waiting i'm i'm dying to get back to you know <laughs> well i'm just happy to tell the audience that you know rejoice there is a second season in the making the story has no I, no 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 the story hasn't ended the scripts are some version of the scripts were written and we were literally we were going to be shooting in the month of may but uh, now let's see when because now so much more needs to be considered before you can just be like okay we're shooting you know uh the logistics the precaution the you know we've uh, and and i mean just imagine and to top it off we have to shoot weddings you yeah. know we could, how, how we it's 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 strange isn't it because suddenly you have to depict something um which is changed this is changed about the world no more are we going to weddings the way we have seen in season 1 now we all have to wear masks so I mean I personally am pretty curious to see how our art and cinema starts to adapt to this new reality you know even going beyond made in heaven you know and and it's going to be an interesting change because like you were saying every public event and celebration has changed yeah. so yeah. I mean that is why the OTT platforms are so important today because they are sending yeah. us to us in our homes which is the safest place that we know today yeah. other question that's just come up uh um 
which is very uh, important, I think, which is again MIH. I'm sorry, there are going to be a lot of MIH questions. For That's you. fine. That's yeah. fine. Rachita is asking, MIH spoke about extremely important issues such as class, dowry, superstitions. I think she's referring to the lady, ed educated lady who gets married to the Bhargat tree and whatnot. Was the script a major, major push towards you taking the role? And, and, Absolutely. And, yeah. Sorry, please continue. And? Yeah, sure, please. Go ahead. No, I just want to say that that's exactly what it was because as I shared with you, until I read the script, I was slightly apprehensive because, you know, I was like, I don't want to play the same part for the third time. But as soon as I read it, I knew this was not at all the same thing as anything I had done before. And what was instrumental in making my decision was exactly this, that, I mean, it's a really tough and strange time we're living in, you know, in this country. And uh, yeah, and I just, it was taking up such a loud and clear voice against patriarchy, misogyny, and all these archaic values and traditions, um, you know, um, yeah, and, and the tremendous support that it was uh, taking up for the queer community, all of these, and most importantly, I think, just the fact that the show had such a strong female gaze, you know, it was really, it was more a woman's perspective than anything, which made me uh, say yes, because I think that is something that is absolutely required in these times yeah and i love the fact that it celebrated women were celebrating their sexuality and sexual desire and negotiating it in this yeah. patriarchal space like you would say in the people, which yeah. was um, which is usually not present uh, the other yeah. question we have is from puneet puneet chasuja who's saying um you've learned a lot more about the gay space in India and the challenges that exist? What advice do you have for gay youth who in many scenarios are really stuck in a maze and can't find a way out during COVID? Um, yeah, I think this is also, we've done a whole series on mental health, by the way. And one of the recurrent questions that have come up is how do queer people deal when they're locked up in homes which are not always welcoming in society, which is not always welcoming. And I think uh, because uh, this question is really not to you as an expert, but really to say that you've inhabited that character and that life. And uh, uh, as a person, what would what would you say to them? Because I think uh, you've come to understand that space a lot better. I'll, uh, you know, I'll start with saying this, that I think like through this time, I can only, of course, share my experience and speak from that. But through this time, through this lockdown period, I have personally felt a lot of empathy for people who have been alone in this time. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I've con I, I think I've been most fortunate if uh, I happen to be living with a partner or family or anyone or even a pet, you know, but being uh, being alone, I can't I can't imagine. And I really my heart goes out to people who have had to uh, deal with this situation like that. You know, first of all, secondly, uh, coming to now this does not necessarily this applies I guess across the board but this is for me that what I realized and I realized very quickly you know that where we are is a strange it can uh, spiral downward very fast you know because I do believe that we are in some sort of mass depression at the moment you know even before this pandemic just the things that are going on in the world all over the world I think that's what the world is kind of experiencing whether we are acknowledging or not and a lot of the a lot of the world's population is suffering mental health issues probably us included you know and uh, so anyway when this lockdown happened so firstly i very much encourage just speaking to people you know no matter what just speak to people just speak to a professional first and foremost if not then your friends family whoever please uh, just get out of this that i am alone in this world nobody is alone first of all um what I came to realize was that this is a strange time and I need to not judge myself or feel too guilty about how I'm taking care of my mental health in this time. I decided to do whatever it is, whatever it takes to keep my mental equilibrium safe and sane. And for that, whether it meant vegetating on a sofa for 48 hours, I did that. Whether it meant have a, a seven cheese pizza five times a week, I did that. 
if it meant consume more alcohol than you otherwise do i did that i literally did whatever i wanted to do to feel good in the moment because i just recognized that it it's it's a hump that we need to just kind of ride over and kind of address once we're over the hump you know what i mean so that's how i personally dealt with it and uh, yeah um as for gay people i just i unfortunately i wish i was more of a uh, you know i wish i had more expertise to to say anything on this but uh, yeah i i unfortunately can't i can only offer what i can offer coming from my personal experience you know for for gay people in particular and for other humans in particular i would say that the first step to anything is to just accept yourself and love yourself and let everything just flow out of there you know that's all i can say yeah i think those are two really important points that you raised is a little bit of self love and a little bit of self care and self indulgence yeah. and yeah. these things and seeking professional help or circles of care are really important yeah sure. uh, yeah let, let me let me take you back a little because i think that's very important uh, uh, you're a delhi person the show that mm-hmm. made you big is a delhi based show all about in a sense um what was it like moving because a lot of people ask this question uh, you know you're you're a success now you're an emmy nominee um what was it like moving and trying to find a foothold in the world of film especially where connections matter so much and you know somebody the other day said to me there's a complete oversupply of talent and an undersupply of good good opportunities you know mm. like you know if there are 500 good people there is there are five roles for them yeah what is it like tell us a little bit about your journey because i think that's that's an interesting uh uh look, look back in these times well yeah i mean like you said i grew up in old delhi in civil lines and delhi generally speaking is a much more star struck place than bombay is you know because this is where films are made primarily i guess people just don't give it that much attention but i'm telling you growing up in delhi i certainly was extremely star struck and enamored by films you know mm. um i was about 10 years old when i moved to bombay with my family and i visited a film set once and i just knew that okay this is what i want to do you know mm. uh but whatever by the time i came to bombay and i i came with a lot of naivety basically i would say i came ready to i came prepared to train myself in whatever grueling manner uh was you know what whatever lay before me and for me working as an assistant director was the path um but once i made the switch and i don't know you know uh, there was a point in time when i mean there was a point until when sure like I think I did really well for myself in the beginning of my career wherein I got to work with some really talented actors and filmmakers Meera Nair Zoya you know Farhan had directed me I had worked with Naseer Saab Baban Irani Shabana Azmi you know Vijay Raj Irfan these real power houses of people you know and uh, including the uh, the odd commercial project like I was in a my name is Khan and um I however started realizing very fast what I was kind of in 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 commercial bollywood I was kind of being uh, relegated to you know the best friend kind of zone and I was not too happy with that happening um you know with that typecast taking place uh, because uh, of course you know every actor wants to shoulder projects uh, be more consequential in the story so so i just kind of started focusing more on uh, independent films that were giving me more to do you know and uh, they were smaller films but uh, they were giving me complete creative satisfaction you know i did ads for money and uh, that's how i survived and so yeah i mean it it's not easy you know it is not easy because other than just whether you you know you still spoke of like oh there's only there's 30 people or 50 people or whatever there's actually a lot lot more you know and i don't know i consider myself really really lucky and fortunate that i if if wherever i've gotten you know what i mean i have no 
misconceptions about like or no feeling of like oh but why am i not there because that's a real trap you know comparing journeys i know i'm digressing a lot i don't know what i'm saying anymore but that's i'm just i'm just trying to say that the journey is really hard it's really difficult i uh, have certainly i faced a lot of heartbreak a lot of rejection a lot of uh, uh, you know and and these things like envy and self doubt and um insecurities these are things like we work we walk hand in hand with these you know this is all part of an actor's journey honestly and it does not escape you even if you've reached the pinnacle of your success i'm telling you even mr amitabh bachchan wakes up with similar insecurities of you know have i not become fat or you know we're all working we're all just counting on our next job you know so i don't know it's not easy for anybody i think the only uh, however what i didn't let happen to me is that you know uh, since we spoke about typecasting earlier as well um typecasting is not something that just happens to you unless you allow it to happen to you you know typecasting is not your problem it is the problem of it is the lack of vision on the part of people who you know just uh, can't see an actor do anything else like people think if oh he's done this well so let's just keep making him do that nobody thinks that oh he's done this well maybe he'll do other things well too you know so number one i didn't let myself get typecast i because i just decided nobody's going to do that i am making my decisions i have the right to say no and i'm going to uh, do what excites me you know uh so yeah i i don't know and and there were many times when i faced um, hurdles like you know like many a time some really big filmmakers uh, mo- on more occasion than one i've i've been right up there in the running for uh, for the part in some really life changing films uh, and at the you know and i couldn't be cast either because uh the market economics weren't allowing the director to take me or uh, another time because i happened to be much better than the star kid who was also being launched in the film so these are experiences i've had but it's okay i don't you know all this all the difficulty i know a big deal is made of of the how difficult life is in this industry but i don't think it's easy anywhere i think uh a new, a medical intern trying to make it in the medical world must be having just as difficult a time as i've had trying to make it here you know it's just that no, we I, get yeah so no no and and actually that's the no no please uh, i'm i'm saying that's that's a really important point that you're making because uh, people forget that nothing yeah. is easy and, and an actor's life is filled with insecurities so you have to learn to live with it i think yeah. that's really Uh, yeah an important thing to say absolutely um, what what i found what i found uh, most important is to really turn all that negativity all that disappointment all that difficulty you face it can really turn into your fuel you know if, if yeah. someone if when someone tells you that you can't be something you can bloody well turn around and be like you know what fine that's just you saying that i'll show you you know <laughs> so yeah and i and i think at the end of it is just belief in yourself and of course a realistic assessment of whether you are t- talented or not <laughs> you know <laughs> i don't know realism yeah. should exist everywhere uh, yeah couple of questions about your new uh, um new series which is gone game right mm. yeah and and people are talking about how how did you shoot it because there's all these stories about you shooting it from home how yeah. does that feel you know i mean for an actor the crew the feel the grime the the paint is 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 like is like preparing for a battle yeah. right and then suddenly yeah. from home how does how, what was that experience like tell us so firstly it was pretty amazing and i think i was really fortunate i don't think there is any other actor that got to shoot and release two projects from within their home during the lockdown the first was a short film for netflix called home stories that's on youtube uh, but that was still a more uh, contained piece it was a 10 minute short film and it was a a single actor in one location so it was easy to do at home you know um this other the series the gone game was something else altogether it was a bunch of really skilled people that had come together out of boredom 
and were like, okay, let's try and do something with this, you know. And I, it was just really exciting from the word go. I was really excited with the cast that was on board and with the director who I've worked with, Mr. Nikhil Bhatt, in a film called Bridge Mohan Amar Rahe. So I was really excited by it. Um, I will say it, it's it's not easy. Shooting at home is not easy because you're doing the work that you're used to, like ten departments doing on a normal shooting day. You know, everything, move the furniture, jhadu. You're doing everything. So I will say that it takes a certain skill set and a certain breed of actor, one who is able to adjust and work with so-called jugad, as we say. You know, and I mean, if you're too used to your frills and uh, your makeup van and this, that, and the other, then I'm sorry, okay, this is not your cup of tea, you know. But uh, I guess it comes down to how badly you want to channelize this, all the all, everything that you're feeling, and you know, and I think the best thing to do with it is to put something creative out. So, yeah, the challenge was great, and for Gone Game, I must say that. there were many times that i was not even i didn't even know what i was doing because my character in particular is the one who contracts the disease he's the one that goes missing so my shoot was completely disconnected from everybody else you know so there were many times that i was just not even aware of why the director is making me do what he's making me do but i would just trust him and just deliver what he wants and this is a show that has been completely put together in its post production full credit to the director and the technical team for pulling this off you know i'm sorry i can't hear you sorry my mic is muted sorry sorry uh, one of the questions uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, two people are asking tahia is asking uh, is about is this the new normal you think because we're going to be living with covid 19 with the best estimates for at least a year and a half to two years there's all talks of vaccines and other things but even if there was a vaccine it would take at least a year to reach the average person yeah. because there are yeah. higher populations that have to be vaccinated first yeah so in industry right is this the new normal at least for a year year and a half uh, is this how we are going to be seeing the creative process work and is that how people are going to be writing scripts what do you think i uh... i do well i hope not i hope this is not the new normal you know i um i'm i hope we are able to reach a place and get back and resume our lives the way they were but i doubt we are going to be able to resume them the way they were so to speak there will be changes taking place and right now that's where we are we are in a transition you know we have to figure a new way of working we are in the process of that all this creative output shows like the gone game that's part of this process you know uh, i myself have been quite confused and this has been a thought that i that's been in on my mind a lot you know because uh, how do right, even before we even get to how we're going to shoot it's it's strange i i wonder how writers and content creators are going to deal with this new reality you know because suddenly while when you if you're writing something suddenly what you were writing does not apply in this new world anymore because you know we can't have people touching the way they used to etc and i don't know i'm very curious to see how this affects our output you know and how how we adapt to it at the end all i know is the one thing i know is that humans adapt so i'm sure uh, and 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 the creative fire is uh, unextinguishable so i know that we will figure it out we will adapt and we will continue to put out uh, our creativity um however best we can let's let's wait and see how that is you know my i i of course don't have the answers that nobody in the world has <laughs> but uh, i can only yeah. hope but but we'll figure it out together yeah i mean it's also interesting because uh, you mentioned the industry you mentioned talent and uh, i want to ask you this question because a couple more questions have come but i want to ask you this question before we take them up which is that the industry itself and i don't mean the film industry alone yeah, but you know yeah. uh, has been under a kind of uh, how shall i say like a sustained campaign against it and this yeah. is of course troubling because we yeah. seem to be make there's an insistence to make um, examples out of them yeah and, and and we are seeing a lot of this negative publicity happen how yeah. do you 
think uh, people are reacting inside the industry and how do you personally feel? Because I think um, there are all these challenges that happen when something very highly visible or an individual who is highly visible, something wrong happens there. Uh, but is that, is that justified? What do you think about it? No, I think that what we've been going through is an absolute smear campaign, to be honest. Um, you know, there's just, it's, there's all kinds of agendas at play. And uh, it's really sad. It's really sad. You know, we as an industry basically leave ourselves uh, vulnerable to people's love, acceptance and hate and brickbats, you know. So that's so yeah and and i mean there is and and there is a bit of a human tendency now the thing is like stardom and celebritydom and fame has also changed a lot over the last decade you know there was a clear boundary between audience and cinema which actually does not exist anymore a lot of it thanks to social media you know so uh, so yeah anyone can say anything you know and and uh, all the celebrities will read everything you know so there's so there's those boundaries don't exist anymore number one so and humans have a tendency you know when you have put something up on a pedestal for really long humans also like to pull that down just as fast you know uh, we love to see our heroes fall as they say but um, so anyway i think but right now what this has happened is highly unfortunate it's really sad that one person's death an extremely talented individual's death by suicide was uh, made such a circus out of, you know, as we have seen now, all the reports and verdicts and everything is going to uh, speak what the truth was and always, you know, always was. But um, in this process, what did happen is that there were many, many, many issues that our country uh, was facing and continues to face that have not, that has not received uh the, the all the media attention that it should have basically and i think that's that's <laughs> that's the success of the agenda you know and um, i mean let's look at it this way even if even if your biggest star is called in for questioning and uh, what is the big deal really they've been called in for questioning whose life is it affecting other than that star and their management and their families it's affecting like seven or two eight people at most you know, there are things going on in this country that are affecting millions of people and there's just no attention on any of those, you know. So, yeah, I think we've absolutely like our sense of priority and uh, has been warped a little bit, but it's OK. Uh, it's OK because in the, the industry will bounce back. Let me say let me very clearly say that the industry will bounce back and we will continue to do what we continue to do. But the but but these the actual rogue elements uh that that have spread these campaigns honestly i think they will slowly but surely see that you know they will bury themselves into the ground eventually and i think uh, thank you for saying that because i want to say this a little bit more clearly india is having the worst unemployment crisis it has ever had india yeah. is having the worst food crisis it has ever had corona is not our only problem our economy yeah. is con acting by several percent. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the film industry has become a kind of a easy scapegoat with little sort of refuge. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, we are also, I mean, we, I mean, I'll say we, but a lot of people in the industry also, yes, as you said, liberal, of course, why not? Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, you know, uh, and well, dissent, we, you know, we dissent when mm -hmm. we see that there is atrocities and injustice taking place and at the end of it what this is what what is going on to some extent is also a very active crackdown on dissent so uh yeah i guess uh, whatever it's not the first time it's happening in the history of the world so yeah and i think dissent is so critical here I, a related question to that has come from tahia who she's saying and i think she was hearing you say some of this so she sent this question. She's asking this very simple question. Did you not fear a backlash when you chose some of these controversial roles? I think she's again referring to MIH uh, because, you know, social media has made everybody so vulnerable, especially the famous, the well-known, the recognized, so vulnerable. 
everybody can abuse you. People with three followers or no followers can get up and write the nastiest things about you. The whole world sees it. Um, it's become like a uncontrollable epidemic, right? Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. A role like this, first, did you fear backlash? Second, did you get backlash? And if you did, how did you cope with it? Yeah, no, honestly, I think like even, look, when, when, when I got this role, it was uh, June 2017. Mm -hmm. So to be very honest with you, even three years ago, we were in a slightly different place from where we are now. You know, this sort of this level of trolling, you know, and uh, an IT cell operating the way it does. This was not happening back then. Or maybe it, I mean, not to this extreme, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, so I, uh, no, I did not fear any backlash, to be honest. I've never, that's just not the way I've worked in the over, you know, since the beginning of my career. So it's really sad if we have to now start considering that, you know, uh, yeah, so no, I did not fear it. And to my surprise as well, I did not get any, not even one. I mean, I myself would have expected you at least one person somewhere will say something derogatory, you know? Nothing. Not one. This I'm 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 in absolute shock and awe of how uh Made in Heaven and Karan Mehra has transcended really age, race, gender, nationality, religion, whatever. And just resonated as like an authentic, beautiful love story, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's that's actually a, a wonderful story to hear because usually when, at least in India today, when you do something uh, controversial, uh, you can be assured of uh, a, a, a kind of whiplash against yeah. you, even yeah. with most minor form of dissent. We're in the last leg of this. I don't know how this time has just passed. Thank you so much. It has, um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that are sort of people have been asking and I think are sort of standard. I mean, what are the kind of actors that you uh, are inspired by, whose craft you appreciate? And uh, for instance, you mentioned how you worked with some of the leading actors. What was that like? Because um, you know, many years ago, uh, uh, um, I, I, I don't remember who spoke about working with uh, Nasir and how just observing Nasir was a process of learning. Uh, who are your uh, favorite picks and what was it like to work with some of them if they were? I'll, uh, okay, this, I'm, I'm just going to go to a little bit of detail here because, um, first of all, I mean, if I am to pick actors from all over the world, like, sure, like Daniel Day Lewis, Christian Bale, there's a whole long list. Over mm -hmm. here, I would say that, you know, in my AD days, when I worked as an assistant director, I got very lucky that I got to observe actors like Mr. Amitabh Bachchan and Mr. Amir Khan through two films. And they, they really, they're institutions at their work also, you know, and there's a lot to pick up from them just in terms of their professionalism, work ethic, the way they approach a project and a scene. So I think there's a lot that I had picked up in those years, you know. Um, and then very early in my career, got to work with Nasir Saab and a lot of really stellar actors. Um, so these are the actors, they, they are who inspire me, honestly, Nasiruddin Shah Saab and, you know, Irfan, his, the career trajectory that he had, uh, God rest his soul. And um, yeah, these are actors that inspire me because they're not too, um, I think the vision, their vision is just slightly broader, you know. And, uh, and, and yeah, and I think art is universal and I think I want to reach as wide as I can, you know. Um, I want to share something about Made in Heaven and Nasisa because in the year 2017, I had just finished shooting a film called Bridge Mohan Amar Rahe and I did not have any other work in hand at the time. I had not taken anything up. So after many years, uh, and I have not done a professional play in many, many years, like 15 to 20 odd years, okay. And I one day got a call from Mr. Nasiruddin Shah saying, Mathur, mere play karega. I said, yeah, of course, you know, let's do it. Um, so 2017, the months of April, May, June, I spent rehearsing a play with Nasir Saab. And the rehearsals for that play were just like a masterclass. Like so often there were like just every day and one-on-one -on -one conversations about acting and this and that. And it was just beautiful. 
uh, at the same time while i was rehearsing for this play i had my first audition call for made in heaven i shared with nasir saab that you know this has happened i've done an audition let's see what happens you know and as it kept solidifying uh, it started becoming more real and i was starting to hear these stories of oh no 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 if you're going to quit nasir saab's play he's he's you know there were, he's there are a scary reputation precedes him let's put it that way you know but he's a real softy but um, i was afraid you know because finally now i was confirmed for made in heaven and i had to uh, it was it was the, the opportunity of a lifetime and i had to bow out of that play and um, he so generously and he really i'm telling you that he blessed me and sent me to do made in heaven with his aashirwad he said jao acha karke aao and uh, you know i stepped onto the sets of made in heaven completely primed by 3 months of rehearsal with nasiruddin shah so i just uh, want to give him this credit you know loud and clear well this is this is a wonderful story to hear especially about such a well known actor and star you know usually yeah. you just have horror stories to hear about a lot of them yeah, and yeah. this is story filled with generosity and love we're yeah. in the last three minutes then my uh a producer is ready to kill me but i'm going to ask you this question because before i let you go i do sure. want to ask you this question um this um, this whole conversation that we are having right now about the arts and how the arts are suffering um you know in this pandemic and probably will suffer you mentioned theater and i know you've been involved in theater before and uh, mm, what would you be uh, what would your advice be to young artists because uh, you know a lot of them feel like this pandemic is the end of the road you know there's no work to be had for a year year and a half and uh, it's kind of hard to yeah to be motivated at this time uh there's enough there's enough there's enough happening around us to motivate us i think it's important number one i think it's important for artists to stay angry i'm sorry but i do, i do think that's true i think i think art is the revolution i think it's really important for artists to continue to be putting out work through their poetry art paintings drawing theater performance whatever it's important to keep uh, uh yeah being the voice of the people the real voice of the people is art you know and mm-hmm. if someone's not listening then the art just needs to get louder and louder i think art is dissent art is democracy and yeah art is the revolution so please young artists we need you your nation needs you so you know continue your work i know it's hard to stay motivated uh without monetary uh this thing but uh, but just just do it for passion just do it for passion for now it'll it'll all pay off when it has to you know we have tough times to overcome well thank you so much that's the perfect note to close on because art is its own reward but it's just remember that your art is is also its reward to thousands and millions of people whose voice it represents on a certain day i mean you know whether it's banksy or it's uh, karan mehra yeah. in heaven uh, absolutely it's kind of like the the and and particularly in popular art i think it's very important because sometimes popular art can transform you in ways that uh, we don't know enough and it changes mindsets it changes societies so yes. thank you so much and thank you thank you thank you for having i mean thank you for coming over and spending thank you for having time. me yeah thank you Take so care. much this was lovely thanks for having